We live in effect. Yes, we are. Yes, we're, sir. We're rolling. It's been a jam-packed battle rap weekend. Oh man, February ended in a way that I would have never expected. I was entertained the entire Saturday from two o'clock till midnight. And Vlad, let's talk battle rap podcast is going to bring it all to everybody. We're not going to separate our podcast. We're not going to separate the get back and the Genesis recap because it happened on the same day. So it's going to be the same recap. Friends, what a way to celebrate leap year. These things only come around once every four years. And leave it up to Battle Rap to make it a weekend to remember for the good that it brought, for the bad that it brought. And we're going to bring it all to you. Man, yo, so much to unpack. Where do you even want to begin, brother? Honestly, like, it's so interesting because, like, I've never had, like, a weekend where there's been so many storylines. Like, I'm just looking at it like, man, what what narrative do I want to pick apart first? (laughs) Well, shall we pick apart the biggest narrative? Because we knew that Drake, along with a new entity, Caffeine, who's backed by Fox and Disney, has jumped into the foray of what is battle rap, has pumped a lot of money into battle rap. There's billboards all over Atlanta, commercials during the Fury and Wilder fight. Everyone's up about it. Drake is tweeting about it, putting everything out there. People driving to this free site to see battle rap at its finest and man it did not go off how they anticipated and the battle rap community gave caffeine a taste of what it's like to be in the culture <laughs> listen man i i seen like the caffeine like twitter page tweeting out like you know like they're apologizing for the stream that they're working on it i can see it. them sweating through the tweets <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. We've never gotten so many tweets about an event that's going on right now. We've got to get this together. I, I, I'm just like, damn, caffeine's getting a taste. And they had one tweet. The CEO actually had a tweet. Ben, you know, he, he put a tweet out apologizing to everybody. And Battle Rap fans have no chill. They're, res- <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, <That's> y'all. <laughs> they're under the CEO's tweets of caffeine sending them gifts of, like, Somebody punching a monitor. <laughs> I love that this coach is like, doesn't give a fuck who you are sometimes. Ruthless. I don't give a fuck who you are. It's a fuck who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, know, they did not expect. That. I will give them this. Salute to them for not trying to duck the smoke. You know. Salute to them for popping out and at least saying, hey, look, we take full responsibility. This has nothing to do with URL. Cut the brothers some slack. This is all on our shoulders. But when you're anticipating an event as big as this was and a, and a match as big as Twerk versus Geechee was, you want everything to run smooth. You're probably thinking, yo, for people who are watching a boxing match going oh snap they're promoting this during a boxing match yo we should throw a battle rap party for this let's get the crew together let's get some food together let's turn up and for the stream to be as damn near 90 to 95 percent of the night that was rough man that was tough and it just makes me go how did this happen how is this possible How did it get flubbed so badly on the debut? This is not how you want to introduce yourself to the community when we've been used to paying for things on WatchBattleLive.com and having things pretty much running smoothly. And you're like, oh, this is free. Fox has something to do with this. They got the bag. Everyone's talking about the bag. So this is going to be even smoother. This is going to be an even better experience. And it was not. It was a terrible viewing experience from the crib, man. Um, so we know that Caffeine is a brand new company and is trying to compete in the market of, of streaming. And I will say as a streaming I, as a streaming platform, it is a bit concerning that if I wanna say what do you think, Vlad, maybe five thousand people, ten thousand people tuned in? 
18,000, 20,000, 25,000. Let's just say 30,000, which I might I, I, look, I'm not going to say it is. I don't want to ballpark it, but let's just say 30,000 people were watching Genesis. Mm hmm. There's been streams on Twitch of a million people at a time. Wow. Wow. And it's, the, the, the top channels have like 3.7 million followers. 7.7 million followers. So they just have a conversion rate of tons of people where the site doesn't crash. Right. I mean, it, when you put it that way, even if there were 100,000 people tuning in live like this, it should have... Everything should have been taken into account. And Wait, I, I want to make sure I word it right because I've said a million like streamers at a time. N not necessarily streamers, but like there's been like channels have millions of people following them. But the right. biggest stream ever on on Twitch was I think six hundred thirty thousand, so more than half a million people at one time. Okay, yeah. So so even that, if you take a fifth of that, a sixth of that, it should have been able to accommodate that man because. This experience, you want to experience it live, and being that battle rap is something that you have to listen to, to catch all the bars, to be able to judge it, to appreciate it, to be able to break it down, to listen to audio streams that were choppy. It sounded like auto-tune in reverse for so much of the night. The, the, the video was lagging. It was jumping everywhere. It was freezing. And... It just was not something that you can enjoy. And like I said, if you had a, a a battle rap viewing party, how do you explain this to people? Like, yo, you know, the culture that I love, that I'm always telling you about, that I'm trying to get you to get into. Hey, and I'm listen, always saying, yo, I, these I, guys I, are the greatest. Vlad, I have your Come solution. Come and watch it. What I got would your, you do? I got your solution. If you had a What's battle rap, that solution, brother? If you had a battle rap viewing party and caffeine wasn't working, you tell everybody, hey, there's still another event going on. Let's all chip in five bucks and let's get this 40 cow pay per view. Man, let, let's all put together that 40 and watch 40. Man, and France, that's what I had to do a good amount of the time because as they were trying to get the stream together, no, actually, RBE started earlier, obviously. They started probably around 2.30 or something yeah, like that, yeah, 2.45. But I, it's almost as if RBE calculated their timing because they let all their prelims matches go on before caffeine launch and then by the time caffeine launched they were starting their main card i'm like ah oh, this is right. where the this is where the culture shifts huh <laughs> but not friends. us though not us friends it was kind of crazy because you know we watch we we see who's in there and i watched people who were at the rbe event who paid to get in Leave that event and start popping up on the URL stream. Now I'm like, I see hey, battlers that battle at that event. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> it was kind of crazy, man. What was wild though was that, you know, I got super excited because I saw that Jay Black tweeted, hey, you know, it's not going to be three or four battles. We're going to get the entire event for free. We're not going to have to wait to catch the other battles on the app. And I that mean, got me even more hyped up. I mean, and did I was you, like, could you imagine damn. how we got that stream of only three, four battles? Yeah, that would. I don't know what would have been worse. I, I don't know because uh, you would have. All right, by that time, the streams were kind of working okay at times, but not always, and not for everyone. But so what, I'm say, what, I'm say, what, no I'm say, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, the first three battles they they streamed, John and Chess, Ars. Uh, Whatever, John and Chess, Shine Eclipse, and I think Arson mm -hmm. Top, right? Or JC Red. Those are the first three battles he streamed. Mm -hmm. And the la two out of those three were so choppy and the audio yeah, gone and the video's matter. gone. So if we only got three battles, they, they, they would have only had three chances to get it right. So they asked, when they told us in the, in, the, in, the, in the beginning of the afternoon, hey, we're streaming all the battles, of course I kind of got happy. I'm like, why, why the sudden change? I just thought maybe they were like, you know what? It only makes sense to give to give more to people the first go round. You know, it's like when, when the dealer goes, hey, man, this one's on me. Next one's on you. You know, you give out that free sample, get everybody hooked on that dope. And then now you got a bunch of customers coming back, lining up for that cheese line. But it did not happen that way, man. They handed out so uh, so a package with some extra fentanyl in that joint, boy. It was not a good look. And I thought, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, are they doing this to, 
you know, get those extra people to come over for that other stream that's going up up the block or like what's going on here man is there some calculated joints some some pettiness going on some league wars going on my my mom always told me a quote nothing good Mama comes love. free and anything is good is not free yeah and yeah. you know I, I thought about that and you know our, our islander parents are skeptical when you say the four letter <laughs> word free <laughs> Because in reality, you always have to pay something at the end of the day, right? There's always a little dotted line. There's always right. some kind of uh, competitive advantage by giving you something for free. And so, although we got a free event, we pay with it for our time. They started at 5, then it ended until 12, like six battles. Another no, 12.45 a.m. Okay, so damn near one. So, another event that went seven hours, almost eight, right? Right. For six battles. While yeah. RBE had ten battles... And and they finished in seven hours. Yeah, yeah. They yo, they kept those they kept those battles moving. They did not play around. One battle was over. I don't think five minutes went by before the next battle was up. They had everything lined up. Everyone was in the building. Everything ran smoothly. The stream ran smoothly. Uh, I had no complaints about the the RBE stream or you know the way that they ran the event. It was one, two, three, rapido, rapido, rapido. Okay, I will say this um, about caffeine. It's the first of its kind. It's the first attempt. So I will obviously commend their their risk for trying something completely brand new. When you try something brand new for the first time on the fly, it never works out the way you probably have it in your mind. That's why you over prepare for things, right? Like you you fix the roof on your on your on your house when it's sunny outside, and not so when the rain comes, like you're good. Right. I do. I do think in the future, start earlier. Start at two. Start at three. Get that out the way. You know what I mean. Um, you know, all, France. All I kept thinking about was, what if Drake was to throw a free concert on Caffeine? Would this happen? Like, would this be acceptable? How would this tarnish like his, you know, his his, his relationship with the, with the folks with the brand? Like, this would not go down. You guys have to treat it like this would have been a free Drake concert streaming on your platform. But I guess maybe they didn't anticipate how many degenerates would be tuning in for this thing. And I mean, they were kicking people off saying that the server is at capacity. You got to get the fuck out of here because we can't serve you guys anymore. That's crazy. But like you said... We do got to say, hey, you know what? This is a new endeavor, and sometimes things happen. But caffeine, this is your welcome to the culture. No one is exempt from the critical analysis. From the from, no one is exempt from it. So you guys got to get yours. And right now, this is your time. But get it together. Come back. We are a forgiving people. If you get it right the next time, it's gonna be all good. But you just got to get it right the next time. You know, um, once again, another clash of URL and RBE. And it looks Oof. like RBE is the victor. Yo, they're up 2 all on the board, man. Listen, I, we but we called it. Every time URL does these events, and I don't want to say it to be petty, but let's just say to be competitive, right? Wink, but wink. We, can't, we can't really say that because we don't know when... We Look, don't know when these no, events no, 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 were no. booked. I, I, I'm not, that's why I'm not calling it petty. I'm just calling okay. it competitive. Every time they try to be competitive with a league on the same day, they, going head to head, they lose. Yeah, it's 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 Mercury goes into retrograde and things don't end up going in their favor. We saw what happened at Summer Madness Seven; that was a disaster. So, so Summer Impact Reloaded. Summer Impact Reloaded was a disaster. And now, and caffeine was a mess. Was a it was, it, and not only was the stream a mess, a lot of the battles were a hot mess. Like some of these battlers got that bag, and I don't know what happened to them. They went shopping, they went tricking, they went trying new designer drugs, and they lost their brains. And they didn't have their material. They didn't have the delivery. They didn't have the concentration. Some of them look like rookies up there. I don't know what was happening. It, it was, some of them guys. It was it was a bad look, man, for some of these guys. Chess made history on caffeine by being oh, the first man. the first battler to choke on the caffeine stream. Yikes! 
and 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 Vlad, I gotta say, man, um, a lot of people yesterday want their respect already from this culture. Mm-hmm. John John being one of them, and the John John and chess battle isn't necessarily, it's, in my opinion, it's not about chess choking or chess losing or doing bad. It's about John John executing a game plan as he always does. Every time you put him against one of the younger guys, and he knows how to win. Like I get it, John John sometimes has cringy schemes, doesn't have the best pin, all that good stuff. But the man knows how to execute a plan and wins. I, I really wish the caffeine stream was working properly because you and I were doing some crazy shit where we had two battles going back and forth and you're quoting bars. Dylan's getting memes ready. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually here doing timekeeping. I'm trying to get stats for caffeine. Right. Shout out to the Dog. champion crew, by the way. They used our, our uh, Tales of the Tape stats for some of the battles. So salute, salute to, to Anwar. Over there. Salute uh, to Vlad, Anwar, Vlad, Jim, I, Black Mark. I, I, I want to talk about... I want to talk about John John and chess. I, I, a little bit of stats I was able to gather before my stream cut off or failed. Mm-hmm. I got some really impressive stats that, you know, you always say the box score is one thing, but you need the eyeball test. But the box yes. score defines a lot in the battle. Battle Rap Stats has the breakdown of, like, stage time, rap time, reaction time. That's one thing he didn't have that I, I stumbled upon while I was time tracking the rounds. Stoppage. How many times does the MC stop themselves in the material? As mm-hmm. a po- every time the crowd erupts and, and they get back into it, like they can't get they can't rap through these things. Check this out. John John's first round, he rapped for eight minutes and forty three seconds, mm-hmm. six and a half minutes of rap time, almost two minutes of reaction time, nine stops. Mm. Chess's first round was ten minutes and forty seconds. Whew. Three minutes and 16 seconds of reaction with 14 stops. Damn. This is where it gets really interesting now. Check this out. John John Nadan's second round where he exploded, which we'll talk about briefly. Mm-hmm. His second round was 11 minutes and 55 seconds with four mm-hmm. minutes and 30 seconds of reaction time. 13 stops, Vlad. That means Damn. he had, a, he, he had a, a, a round that was almost a minute and some change longer than Chess's first round with less stoppage. <laughs> How does this happen? That that exemplifies crowd control. Absolutely, yo, crowd control. That is, those are two words that we are definitely going to have to go over later. John John the Don showed mastery on that stage once again. Once again, you give him a younger guy who's not uh, as seasoned on those big stages as he is. As we know, John John the Don has done. What three or four summer madnesses? Uh, how many gnomes has he done? About four of those, and you know, you did the tail of the tape. Chess has only done one solo summer madness, I want to say, and one solo gnome. He's so done two gnomes those, and one summer two madness. Two gnomes so, and yeah, one so, summer madness. So there's a gap, right? Right. There's a big gap, and that experience gap plays a big difference. It's a big difference between going into the uh, the main stage legacy seven stages times. or the volumes yeah. and stuff yeah. like that, and then you jump on that big stage where. 1500 people there you know a thousand people 2000 people and you have to control them and the biggest takeaway first of all let me start with the positive john john the don was on one salute to him for having the little don on wednesday becoming a father a first-time father has to be one of the craziest experiences of your life and you're probably getting zero sleep right john showed up looking like a dad with the with the with the ill uh vest suit on and all that looking quite dapper and out the gate just mastery controlling the crowd setting the pace just landing his bombs moving on just really working the stage and he continued to do that the entire night and in the first round you can see after every time chess drops a bar think about it i have to you know i gotta slow down because i'm ahead of them they gotta catch up you know it's it's too it's too far ahead of them they gotta catch i'm like dog that was bad crap like what are you doing this is not professional this is not how you keep the crowd and maybe you keep the crowd engaged when there's 300 people in the building or there's 50 to 80 people in a volume and everyone is there and everyone can can take that time but when you have a bigger crowd and you have something as important like this going on you can't be taking all that time and then france the burp monster came back he's like oh i I drank before getting on the stage i'm gonna have to burp i'm gonna have to burp 
I thought he was going to puke again. Oh, no, you heard. Your man let out a nasty ass burp. And I was like, is this a telltale sign of what's to come for the rest of the night? And John John's just standing there looking at him like, look at this dude, man. Like, he, he don't even know. He's digging himself into a hole right now with all of this. Well, and it was you know, Chester's post game interview, uh, I believe hip hop is real. He said mm-hmm. that he wasn't motivated for John, and no. I don't. I really don't want to hear that because it's like you accepted the match. You knew what right. the stakes. You, you knew what the stakes and were. And you accepted you what, the bag. You know what I mean? So like nobody. Listen, battlers. I'm going to tell you guys straight up. Nobody wants to hear that you're not motivated mm-hmm. after losing, especially if you lose clear, right? Or you choke because right. you accepted the match. You took the money. You knew what you signed up for. Be a professional. Absolutely. So, I, I don't want to. I'm, I'm really not going to tolerate the unmotivated excuse from him. You know, he just. And I also would love for fans at this point to really just realize at the end of the day, this is about John, John the Don, not necessarily Chess doing bad. I will say, though, Vlad, even though Chess had a debacle on the stage and made caffeine history, <laughs> I will say this. I'm not going to be so fickle with Chess. You know, he's had a solid. And good to great performances. Geechee Gotti, Jerry West, Bad News, Danny Myers, Arsenal, Tori Doe, O Red. That's that's He's been fantastic that's, since that's, the Geechee battle. Fantastic. That's, se- that's seven battles. And after the Geechee battle, Shine told you know, Chess yeah, get five I need, of those, yeah. I need to see you be pro- consistent for five battles. And we didn't even count the two on two. So that's eight performances. So after Shine asked him for five performances, he gave him seven. Bonus three. Yeah. He, he gave him he gave him seven. You know what I mean? So uh, in his last ten, he's 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 eight for one as far as good performances. I'm not gonna be that fickle to be like, Oh, I don't wanna see Chess and Shine, da 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 but I will say the chess crumbles under pressure. Um, he still hasn't made the fundamental adjustments, and I will I will be honest. Even though he's been good in all his performances, I'm not gonna overly credit him just for being able to get through his material. Like a, the, a lot of those battles are losses, and only one of those are in a big room. Right. So yeah, they, we've seen what happened on the big stage before when when he had a uh, when he had the Tay Rock battle. We saw what happened with that one, and this was kind of the same thing. The first round, his material was good. The writing was good of it. It was just the delivery and the execution just wasn't quite up to par. And it definitely wasn't on the Tay Rock level either as far as how he was connecting everything and landing everything. If you're just reading the rhymes or just checking out what he said, then, yes, you know, you're going to be like, oh, you know, Chess wrote some good stuff. And um, and I'm not mad at that at all. But it was a, like, what I is going a, on here? I got a cool stat for you. Talk to me. This is the first time John John the Don has opened the night since Summer Madness 2. Oh, really? Interesting. Wow. Now, he had to, man, because, you know, he's like, listen, I ain't sleeping like three days since this kid's been here. Let me go first and then let you me remember, go home. You, you remember the finals with the Raptors and the Warriors when Van Fleet had his kid and all of a sudden he was shooting lights out? Oh, Black. yes, lights out. What, what What is it about becoming a brand new father that just lights this fuel of fire in you that you don't even really subconsciously know that you have? I think it's it's a rebirth. You get to see yourself pretty much being born again. And there's a new sense of responsibility that you have. And there's a new sense of love that you have. And there's a new sense of like, yo, I can't let this kid down, man. The My kid just got here. I can't come out here looking like a loser. I got to show him that dad is a winner and dad knows what to do. And I said this when they had the face off, I was like, yo, John John got that new dad swag. Like he's going to come with a new energy. Like he's not going to allow Chess to just come out there and try to bark all over him or walk all over him, which, you know, I didn't, John John is such a formidable opponent anyway, but he had that new dad swag. And I was like, I don't know. Chess might be in trouble, man, because, you know, when you feel that connection and you feel that sense of you can't be stopped right now because of this new birth and that new energy you have, it could be problems for people. And shout out to Van Fleet still balling out here. Shout out to Van Fleet. Man, um, so, so many storylines from this weekend. I, like, I I'm, I have to put them all in a hat and just, like, jumble it and pick it apart. Right? <laughs> Let's go. So, you know what? We should hop over to the RBE side now. Yo. I want to talk about the main event in RB. Let's get to the. Let's get to that. Oh, <laughs> let's get straight to it. Let's oh, get straight. 
let's get straight to it. Um, forty cows performance. Listen, I will say this: if you if you went to Vegas and you try to cash in on the thirteen twenty, right, mm-hmm. you didn't win. <laughs> you got close to winning, and for a minute you almost thought to yourself, "Did I just put down a twenty dollar bet, and I'm gonna get paid two hundred and sixty dollars?" That's a flip. That is a flip. You were close, but no cigar. Forty right. cow, Vlad. I think. I think I'm ready to say this. Let's do it. And you might disagree, so this is where the debate comes in. I love this. I think he had the second best comeback in battle rap of all time. Who I mean, is the first, rappers. in your opinion? I, I still think the first is King Los. Would you be mad if you said it was a equal, a tie? I mean, uh, they're definitely in the same ballpark. And, and if you want to make the argument that King Los mailed one of his rounds in, <laughs> right? Which he did. And King Los also had a much weaker opponent. Like, Head Ice and Ill Will is not the same caliber. This is a, a past prime Head Ice versus a champion of the year caliber Ill Will. So, I, yeah. I can I hear that. But that their opponents don't matter right now. It's necessarily just their performance. Well, friends, if I, I had to really break it down, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. My bad, brother. But I think 40 versus Los, I think... The way Forty was still able to command everything, I think his delivery was slightly better than King Los's. I, I think the way he that. worked that stage, the way he didn't stop when the crowd wasn't rocking with him. I mean, he even brought out some props at the end, did some extra stuff, and you know had his direct angles towards him. If you want to go by who had the more technical, better writing at times, then okay, yeah, maybe King Lowe's put together some better lyrics here and there, maybe some better, yeah, no, King you Lose know, multis or whatever. But he was definitely, he was over- definitely more lyrical. Had the multis, he he had the punches, he had the wordplay, he had good battle rap wordplay. Like he had something that you can hear a JC will write, honestly. Right, but if I had to go with the eyeball test of who looked like a more seasoned modern battle rapper up there, just from the way that. From the eyeball test, I would go with Forty Cal. You know, he looked like a guy who's been doing this here and there and here and there. Like he looks like he's been doing this. Whereas at times you could see that Los's Los's delivery up there and the way he worked the stage wasn't quite up to par as what Forty did on that stage. And it was similar size stages also, so that also plays that also goes to the head to head factor too because it wasn't like. You know, one had a big, humongous stage to work, and one had the small stage to work. I might, I, just, I, I think I'm gonna roll with forty. I, I kind of feel like just King Los had higher highs than than forty cal because like forty cal's delivery and cadence was there, and he de- and both of these guys studied the game too. So I'm, I will say that like forty came out with the prop, he had an angle, you know, he he had a whole little performance. He switched it up, tried to get funny. He literally yeah. encompassed his third round into everything that. Like all the attributes of battle rap, but I also felt like King Los understood a lot of what we want to hear content-wise. So when you go back to listen to these battles, right, you're gonna just appreciate that Forty Cal kind of had the the conditioning, but King Los had the power to be up there. You know what I mean? Like he had the haymakers. He had an, a really strong angle and an angle that was actually accurate. Right. So that's I why hear all that. And plus, we're arguing two rounds to three, <laughs> so that that that, that goes to, that goes both ways. You can say, "Hell, he didn't have two rounds," or I could say, "Well, if he had a third, then." Well, I would say this also too. By the third round, usually guys are floundering around. By that third round, when they're making the return, we've seen Joe Button drop the mic. We've seen Cassidy, you know, yeah, start to out the hit building twice. The booze. And cannabis pull out the notebook. Oh man. man, meltdowns, complete meltdowns. But this didn't happen. Actually, I, yo, actually, forty cal wrote uphill, man. By the time he got to the third, that was his best round, and he put everything together in that round. So it can come down to preference at that point. But I, yes, King Los technically had better bars or whatever. But forty looked like he's been there. So I feel like you at know. that moment, right? Like we're, the the complaint on both ends is is polar opposite to each other. You're gonna say Los's delivery wasn't good, but his content was. Forty's delivery was great, but his content wasn't. What do you What do you care for more at that moment? I'm well, his third care- round content was good. I'm, you know, because I went back earlier today and I was like, 
All right. On because I wanted to really clearly see that I give the first round that I give the first round, you know, some extra welcome back cooking. And I wanted to be critical. I didn't want to do that. So I went back and, you know, watching it on the first go round, some extra spice, some extra seasoning was added to that cooking. But when you really watch that first round again from 40, you know, it was all right. You know, it was all right. Then the second he got better and the third, I just thought was dope. You know, and he put it all together. You know, so I got to give him props for that for for writing uphill with most of these guys by the time was by the time they're a quarter of a way through the second round it's like dog like what are you doing you ain't gonna win and like you said ill will was a much better opponent than head ice was and that has also has a lot to do with it too because you're facing a guy who's who's really putting up a fight head ice king, was just saying king, all kind of king homosexual Lose, innuendos towards king lows king lows had his opponent swapped out i think a lot of Guys would have been like, "That's nah. true too. That is and, true too." And King, King Los did what we like to say, "Warrior Island shit, man." Yeah, Listen, that's true. I, I, look, if you're gonna argue Forty Cat had the better performance, I ain't mad at it. It's not like a one A one B kind of thing. And if you're but, gonna argue that King Los had the better bars and writing and pen, I'm not gonna argue that. So it kind of balances itself out in a way. It does. It absolutely does. I. But regardless, to have the second best comeback or, the, or arguably the first, that says a lot about you. Um, Facts. I, I, if Forty Cal just had harder punchlines, he could right. beat a lot. I mean, even what well, he gave that day, he could beat a lot of mid tier guys. Yeah, yeah. And he he did not look uncomfortable at all up there. Like he did not look uncomfortable at all. And this is, friends, you know we we got to give him his flowers because we both did not think that he was going to be this comfortable up there you know at all so i gotta give him his flowers for saying yo 40 you look wild comfortable up there and you haven't done this in 14 15 years so to come out the first time and be you know this decent i only hope that you get better pay more attention to your writing step some of the punch lines up just tighten up a little bit smooth out round out some of those edges and i want to see you back in the ring man I want to see you back in the ring, so salute to you for totally proving me wrong. I didn't think you were going to hey. sound this good. I didn't think your cadences were going to be there. You know, you weren't sparring with cats. You seemed so laid back. I thought you was going to get washed. But prove me wrong, brother. So Hey, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me pull up uh, J.R. Ryder's Twitter page. Oh, boy. Because that guy was having a field day. Ryder. No excuses for y'all. LOL. Not enough from Will. Hope y'all learn from 40 Cal. Arm muscle emoji. The next tweet. The next tweet. After Will's third round. Ha 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 3 0 40 Cal. Whoa. He said Will had a good JR Rider name flip, but not enough, champ. And this is supposed to be y'all champion. This is supposed to be y'all champion? Champion. Oh, I like this part. He goes, Somebody should have sparred with Ill Will. <laughs> yeah, this dude is wild, man. JR Ryder's tweets made the battle so much better for me, honestly. Oh man. And I love the forties post game also. Like his interviews were on point, man, and he, he was hitting all his points. Yeah, what's that what's that what's confident the, afterwards? What's the likelihood of forty Cal and Will fucking the same bitch? It's a small world, bruh. Oh, these battle rap chicks is nasty, B. Hey man, it's a small world. And these cats, man, I'm like yeah, all these cats is running up in the same chicks over and over again. There's something disturbing about all this. I don't know. Like, I'm cool, man. If I know you've been with all these cats, I'm trying to run the other way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I need what a untapped you, market. You what know do what you think saying? of, uh, did, did you score any round for 40 Cal? Because I still had him losing 3-0 edge. You gave, him the, edge. You gave, him, gave the him the third. See, here's the thing, right? I, I was discussing the, with a bunch of my battle rap buddies and shout out to my boy Jeff and uh, mm-hmm. uh, and people from our Slack too, uh, mm-hmm. the Generates. Forty's Cow's third was his best round, but like the angle wasn't true. So how much validity are you gonna hold to it when Ill Will's on cruise control, rebuttaling and negating the entire round? So like you can uh, you're gonna give it to Forty off entertainment factor, I guess, but not necessarily off content. And it Listen, shouldn't be that. It should it shouldn't be that way all the time. That's, that's I mean, what I feel. battle like. rap if. If you can make the crowd connect with the angle, whether it's true or not, because how do we know how all these other angles are true? 
Some of them you might know because there's concrete evidence there. There's video evidence. There's websites you can go to, look up legal documents, things of that nature. But this is a form of entertainment. And if it's entertaining and it's hitting, then, hey, it's hidden. That's it, man. If it lands, it lands. But if it but if it's not real or it gets negated the following round, got taken into consideration. What happens? This, how many times do these guys say, "I fucked your bitch and your baby was in the bed while your mom's was giving me head"? And it's like, all right, whatever, dog. Like you know, this is battle rap. You know, you you, you create. There, he knows the woman. She sent him something, so there's at least enough to play off of it and make it an entertaining thing. You know, so. It was entertaining enough for me, and he dressed it up well. He even brought out, like, the, the little James Brown segment that he was doing with the throwback, his man doing the beatbox with it. Like, it was dope, man. It was dope. Even Ill Will was like, yo, he might give him the third. So if Ill Will is saying he might give him the third, then I'm cool with that. Uh, I guess. I, I mean, if I had to pick around me personally – Believe it or not, I felt like the second was close, but Will did oh, enough towards Will did enough towards the end to just like rear off. Yeah, so, I thought Will like started running away hey, with that I, one. I I I'm interested to see so if there's a community. I'm interested to see if there's a community online that wants to believe 40 Cal actually won this battle. Um, Rap Grid did something very strange. They put out a poll. They said who won the battle? 43-0, mm-hmm. 42-1, Cal 3-0, Cal 2-1. Uh-huh. Did you hear the options? Yeah, three zero two one. Yeah, no, 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 no. Forty three zero forty two one. Cal three zero. Cal two one. Right. So there's no ill will in the poll. Oh, why would they do that? <laughs> what kind of narrative is this? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, what's going on over there? <laughs> that was that was so bizarre. So like off rip. <laughs> Any the eyeball is going to instantly point to one of the names, and people aren't going to look, and they're going to be like, "Oh shit, it was losing on the poll. It was not even on the poll." <laughs> Yo, man, what kind of somebody look, fell look, asleep at the wheel, I, man? I read it to you just now, and you didn't even catch it. Yeah, because you know, in your brain, you're just like, "Yeah, whatever." Like it has to be, you know, both con- both the contestants have to be on the poll, but that's wild, man. Because forty and Cal separating the name is two different ways to call them, so. Right. If you see forty, you're gonna instantly associate forty and disassociate 40, the yeah, other yeah. and disassociate the other <laughs> option on the poll. I'm like, yo, rap grid, what's happening here? And then JR Ryder JR Ryder's talking about I'm up on the he's up on the polls. I'm like, Great. We made a fake poll and JR Ryder <laughs> believes it's real. You see what you did, Rap Grid? Oh my gosh, man. That's funny. That's funny. But you okay. ask you a question. Do you think uh ARP got a, a good ROI from this battle? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. I mean, if Forty signed a contract like he disclosed, and that he's already locked in for his next opponent, and yeah. it sounds like Forty Cal said in his post game interview with Fifteen Minutes of Fame that he now he knows what the crowd likes. Mm-hmm. All it took was one battle for him to get his feet wet, and he knows what to do even better. So if he was this good this first time around, I think this second time around he's gonna know what to do. I'm actually shocked that he was this good without sparring. How about that, Vlad? Is, is, is maybe sparring the 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 negative? I mean, I can't say that. I, I refuse <laughs> to he's, say that. He's the only guy that returned that didn't spar with anybody. Maybe it's an anomaly. I don't know. Maybe this guy's just an alien like that. It's an outlier. But, it has, it's an outlier. Yeah, I would sure. not encourage people to not, <laughs> to not holler at anyone. Don't think that you guys all can do this. I don't know what kind of water 40 Cal is drinking, but... This was a dope comeback, a dope return. Just think he just has to step up the pen a little bit, step up some of those uh, punches a little bit, and uh, just just sharpen up a little bit. But I definitely want to see it again, though. I want to see it again. Yo, let's cross over to back to Genesis. Let's talk about their main event. Mm, hmm So the Genesis main event, Vlad. Mm-hmm. <sighs> supposed to be a mega match. Supposed to be... A battle of its era. It's supposed to be bringing in this brand new decade of URL with its two faces. These are the two stars from the 2016 PG draft. Vlad, only one person held their end of the bargain this match. And that person is none other than Geechee Gotti, a.k.a. Mr. Consistency, <laughs> a.k.a. Mr. 3000. This man always brings it. He's a consummate professional. You could always count on him. 
to do what you expect him to do and he did just that whereas twerk is mr highlight mr moment and the highlights and the moments were few and far in between he didn't control that stage like he normally does he didn't find the reactions that he normally looks for and not to say that the battle was completely one-sided because you know if you go back and you look at some bars and things of that nature and if you're a hardcore twerk fan i'm sure that you're gonna find at least one round that you want to give to him clearly and you can even try to make a I, I have claimed that I ha- he got two of those rounds if you want to. If you want to. Look, but I have a PSA. Objective, uh. I have a PSA. I feel like if you are one of the hardcore twerk fans, look, and he's built a fan base where people will defend him no matter what. Shout battles where the he twerkers. Ch- pe- people where he, battles where he choked, people will come to his defense. If you're a real twerk fan, even if you want to be like, oh, twerk might have still won this battle. You can't lie to yourself and say that this was one of his best performances as opposed to Geechee. This was one of his better performances. Like, I don't think this was like an A-level Geechee. This isn't a top three Geechee, but this, this is, this is closer to being a bottom three twerk than it is a, than it is a top three twerk. You know what I mean? And I, I have an interesting, uh, parallel for that. And I feel like New Jersey twerk can't handle the headliner being, can't handle the pressure being a headliner. You mean being the last battle of the night or just being the headliner? No, I mean, essentially on URL, in almost 99.9% of their cases, or Mm -hmm. I'll say 90% of the cases, because there's always a few situations where they move things around, the headliner goes last always on URL. Always. That's their thing. Mm -hmm. And Twerk's only gone last two times, and that was against Mr. Wavy, and we've seen that performance, where people want to argue for Wavy, but... I mean, people want to argue for Twerk, but Wavy is our first ever champion of the night off right. that performance. And, and and this battle was very close to that. I felt like that performance was just maybe like a level above the Wavy performance where he jerseyed out in a round. His pacing was very off. Mm-hmm. He was looking for that explosive uh, feedback and momentum from the crowd, and they can't give it to you because they've been standing for seven hours. So even if the content is good, like... The, the people in the crowd just don't have the energy to be explosive, so you'd have to carry them through that. You know, he reverted back to his old ways where, like, he's kind of, like, scoffing his teeth, sucking his teeth where, like, things don't land. Um, I was shocked at some of his buildup in a lot of his lines. Like, this, I was almost up there thinking to myself, like, what's wrong with him? Like, this is supposed to be an, a generational battle right here. What's wrong with him is that he had a lot going on this weekend. Mm. You know, we saw the footage of what happened. We ain't going to shy away from it, neither. No, not at all. We saw the footage of him assaulting one of the partners at URL. And I can't imagine that after that happens, that everything is just peachy keen and you just go about your business and not think about it. And it doesn't weigh on your mind and it doesn't affect how you're going to perform, how you're going to prepare. And he's already a guy who prepares last minute. That's just what it is. He says that's what he does. He comes up with the rhymes the night before, two days before, the day of, on the way to the battle. And sometimes it's amazing. And when it is amazing, we give him all the props in the world. But sometimes it's not going to work out. And if you're doing something like that where you're where you're physically assaulting one of the partners of the company that's cutting you your check, that you're headlining the 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 event for and you're doing it at the caffeine studios with a lot of the head honchos there a lot of the check cutters this, your face is on billboards all over atlanta you know and you, you, you're on commercials during big boxing matches and this happens and you're trying to write your rhymes last minute after this is happening listen france i'm sure he was on the phone with Beasley or face to face with Beasley. Smack is talking to him. Everyone is like, yo, what the hell is going on? What are you doing? Like, how can this go down? And we don't know what happens truly behind the scenes. We don't know if this was ever in jeopardy. We don't know if, you know, how long this, this, but this definitely had to be a distraction. You could not be totally focused on your objective on putting on a classic with Geechee with that in the atmosphere like that. And Geechee consummate professional always a humble guy 
level headed, always cool, calm, collected, in control. He ain't had none of that to worry about. So he can go up there, even if he was tired, because both guys did look tired. I ain't gonna front, you I mean, know. So yeah, what it's, do you mid- think? it's it's midnight, so uh, I wouldn't expect anybody to have energy after seven hours of standing. But to touch on the situation, right? You're right, lad. Like you, you, you pretty much nailed it. There's no way in your head you could have been clear and 100 percent focused on the battle. Like we've even seen it in with, with our athletes, where certain things come out in the news, <laughs> right? And then very <laughs> matter of fact, Vlad, you might remember this last year. You remember last year when LeBron tried to get the entire train, the team traded for Anthony Davis, and the right. shit failed. And the very first game after that was in Indiana, where they got smoked by 40. Dunk up the joint, yeah. The, they were all the atmosphere was bad. The atmosphere was bad, and all these things like people don't realize it does affect your emotional intelligence when you're around bad atmosphere. You're having toxic thoughts or or, or your aggressive behavior, and, and it trickles down to your performance at, at some point in time. Um, the situation was really tragic, honestly, because obviously we don't allegedly know the truth we'll never know the truth because in the vid- in the footage you hear Torque saying like you hit my baby mom we don't know if he's referring to in the context of hitting like you hit her up hitting right. like you physically touched her hitting her like you know you had sexual, um, you had yeah, sexual intercourse with her like unfortunately slang for hit is is, is so open that and we don't know exactly what happened and we can never prove it what we can right. prove is that you were at the caffeine studios and that you put your hands on a partner more importantly, like, if we're just talking physique, like, uh, Norbs is, like, a whale, and, and, and Twerk is, like, a giant, so, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure that, like, just putting somebody like that on the wall without having to get as aggressive as you did, you get your point across, too, you know, like, you don't really get the points for beating up on somebody like that. More importantly, you don't do it in the in the environment of work. Like this is the caffeine studios. This can and this couldn't have been handled anywhere where there's no cameras. His whoever was there with him was the person that recorded it and they chose to upload it. So, so then it's like you do the crime anyway and you upload it. Let me t- let me tell you a story. When I was in volume three mm-hmm. and Rumnity and Twerk had that situation in the in the second round, they mm-hmm. went to the they went outside to the back. And JB held the door. And JB told everybody, nobody's going out there. Let them handle mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And to this day, only a very selective few people even know what happened at that moment. And only a few right. eyes saw it. So let's just say they, 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 they got it popping and they did their thing for a few minutes and came back and battled. It's not on camera. Nobody right. knows. They right. handled it the way they were supposed to handle it. Why couldn't that happen in this situation? I, I don't get it. It was a mess. Listen, there's a time and place for everything. And even if you have that in your mind, you don't handle it there. You don't crap where you eat. And like you said, we don't know what the truth is. Only those three people will know what the truth is. So that's not for me to speculate what's true and what's not, because we've seen him in the past say that he knew for a fact something was true. He physically assaulted someone at a a member of media a prominent member of media who helps put these guys in a good position up on this is 50.com getting them some great exposure and then it comes out that this was not the guy who you thought you know was was uh another person let's just put it that way and if you're in the culture you know what we're talking about so what if this is all a mistake what if this is not you know and you're putting your whole career in jeopardy at this point and you're doing it at the studios with the brand new partners. There's a time and place for everything. Listen, there are people who have had on-site beef with one another. But sometimes when they cross paths with one another and it's not the time and place to do it, they say, you know what? We'll handle it next time. And there's, there's t- there's, Look, there's tons uh, of stories in battle rap because this is a very aggressive sport. So sometimes it's even hard to dial the things off. There's plenty of stories of people having altercations or arguments right. or disputes or, or fights. That happens. But we don't, get to, we don't get to live to see. We just hear about it. And that's how this should have been, honestly. It should have been something that we heard about or it happened away from... Uh, right, you know, and when area put of the footage out yourself, like that's what I don't understand. And if you see the footage, it looks like, you know, you you just sneak up on the dude. You know, you the, sneak look, up on him and, and I, I you catch him off guard, and, and I don't want to really put this try in the, to do some damage. I don't want to put this in the air, but I'm just saying, if the footage escalates into, you know, the legal system, it does not go in your favor. No, not at all, not at yeah. all. And you know, like you said, uh, 
you know, LeBron, the greatest sports, the greatest athletes will always tell you, like, hey, you know, this sport is 90% mental. But yet they're doing everything physically, right? So now you're doing a sport where you have to come up with rhymes using your brain and you have this on your mind. There's no way you can... There's no way you can uh, be at 100%. You can't fully function like that. France, there's a lot of times we see him on the stage. He's coming up. He's pulling the rhymes out of thin air in the entire second round. It was an entire freestyle. It's like either piecing together loose lines that he had and coming up with freestyles at that point. And it was just like, dog, this is not it right here, man. This is not... This to go is back, not main event material. Yeah, to go back to the performance and to put a ribbon on the Norbs and Torque situation, I'm really interested to see if URL does anything regarding it or addresses mm. it. Because, I mean, for an entire Saturday morning and Friday night, or, I mean, Saturday morning, I should say, whatever, Norbs yeah. was a topic. And, and and it almost overshadowed your event. Like, that's, the kind, of, that's kind of the last thing you want for... A situation to overshadow everything, you know what I mean? It's almost as if we had no regards for the fact that this event or caffeine or Genesis was supposed to be a breakthrough for this brand, you know. So I, I mean, yeah. I would hate, I would hate to see something like this go unjustified. We have to it's wait gonna, and see. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out, man. Because as they try to get legitimate with this, and as they try to turn it into a a legit business and continue on and turn it up to the professional level. We're going to see what happens, man, because we know that there's consequences and repercussions when you look at UFC or NFL or NBA and, you know, always compare yourself to those leagues. So I can't see uh, a NBA player doing this to a VP of basketball somewhere and things just get, all right. Yeah, man. See you at the next event. So uh, I want to see how this gets handled, man. Uh, This was kind of crazy. But, friends, we would be remiss if we did not talk about Geechee Gotti's performance, his material, what he brought to the table. Yeah, I w- Can you speak th- th- on that a little bit, please, brother? Thank, thank God for the segue. I was going to say we spent about 17 minutes on twerk oh, you know. his, de- his debacle. <laughs> hey, yeah. You know how it is, man. Look, I, I will say Geechee Gotti did something that um, has already been proven. He's the face of URL right now. There's no question about it. He's mm-hmm. absolutely the face of URL. And... You know, I don't want to retroactively go back to this battle and be like, damn, you should have went with Geechee Gotti. He's way more consistent. Consistency matters for everything. Because mm-hmm. everything down the line for this battle was split down the middle. You know, you made a poll for anything. It was 50-50. Right. And some of their highest performances, you can edge it to somebody else. But at some point in your career, you are who you are through the goods and through the bad. We know what to get from Geechee Gotti. We're never going to get a whack Geechee Gotti. We might get something that's a little bit on cruise control more than others. We might get one that's more explosive than others. But we're never going to get a bad Geechee Gotti. And Geechee Gotti, again, showing his rebuttaling skills, had a surgical second round, mm. closed the battle out strong. That whole um, Pyro Street thing was just, it's Wow. It's, it's been 60 days into 2020, and Geechee, Geechee Gotti's battled five times already, Vlad. That's crazy, and he's got That's, a battle March seventh that we're going to be at the following the week of the culture. So, yeah. so if you if you add that up in sixty seven days, Geechee guy is going to have battled six times. If you wow. average it out, that's one battle almost every eleven days. Jeez, Louise! When you put that on paper, the Geechee guy has battled six times in sixty seven days, which is averaging eleven ba- eleven eleven days per battle. That lets you know that this guy's work ethic is so incredible, and and his conditioning. Is, is like almost second to none in this culture. And Jay Black put this out there. I want to quote him. I want to credit him for this. He said, preparation is an undervalued asset in, in battle rap because like there's people that just prepare so good and we don't get a chance to see it until they execute. So we don't appreciate what they, what goes into their prep. Right. Right. Each guy's one of those guys has mastered preparation. Absolutely, and he's always going to give you one of those rounds where you're just like, oh, man, this is crazy right here. And, you know, he showed up to the battle. Have we seen better Geechees? Yes, but did we get a good Geechee? Absolutely. We got a good Geechee last night, and he put on and always does what he does, man. So salute to Geechee Gotti for always coming through and putting on for the culture, man. Salute to you, my brother. Yeah, man, I'm I'm proud of Geechee. I'm very proud of Geechee Gotti. 
so many more storylines in the battle, man. Uh, we're, we're almost reaching the one hour mark on this pod. Everybody enjoy this one. This is a good old two hour pod. Well, you know, we, had, we had to you, get the main events out the way, man, and you get, spend getting, a little extra time the, on those. You you're know? getting a good, you're getting a good old two hour pod on your Monday morning over these weekend shenanigans. Nah, that was two hour pod with Franz and Vlad. Ah, hey, Vlad, I, 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 I'm gonna pick a storyline, and you're gonna pick one, and then we're just gonna keep going from there. Okay, all right, player. Um. I'm just so happy there's so many to choose from. Uh, this makes me excited. All right, let's get this one out the way. Let's go back to RBE. Oh, Big K versus Adi oh, Boom. Oh. Uh, oh, by yeah. the way, the RB the RBE chant came back this weekend, but we'll get to Yo, that. Yo, friends. Yo, that energy in that building, man, at times was crazy. The this, RBE was the be- this was the best. This was the best event in the music room to date. It was packed up. better than a Hitman event. They were yeah, live so. in there. It was it was, nah, was jam packed in there it, for that it, one. That was kind of crazy. Hit, 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 Hitman and Bill was special, but overall, like pound for pound, yeah, I, I might edge this yeah. event. It was crazy. Oh man, well, well, well. Adi Boom versus Big K. Before we, we just... even start, I'm ready to tear you apart because you and I were arguing hey, about this battle. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, here we go. I'm, oh. I'm 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 ready to tear you to shreds. Is that better? Hey, yeah, well, that's even crazier. <laughs> Now, but anywho, moving on. Go ahead. We know what you mean. You and I were debating about this battle beforehand, and I yes, and we I, were. And I knew before the battle even happened that you were just gonna fall back on your regular excuse. Big K was fired for one round, and he mailed it in for the other two. But he so, did. Uh, he did. But let's put this into context, right? So I didn't even have to watch the battle to know your argument. I I seen it coming. Big K goes first. Well, first of all, you were telling me, yo, honey, boom, he wasn't all that. He had some corny rhymes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he was kind of corny. He had oh, was a dime, a dozen. Uh, Big K killed him. And I'm like, man, it was that bad. <laughs> all right. I didn't get a chance to see it yesterday because I, I was trying to struggle through one of those URL battles. And I got a chance to watch it today. And, you know, but I knew what happened in the battle because obviously it was all over Twitter. So Big K goes first and man, he wastes no time. Calls Adi Boom a snitch, brings out paperwork, tells you the websites you can go to and look it up on the uh, New Jersey, you know, Justia website and all that. And hey, man, it's on the website. So it has to be true. You know, if it's on a legal New Jersey website. All right. So on the website and on the paperwork, it says that Adi Boom, you know, snitched on his co defendant. Adi Boom only gets five years. His co defendant gets 17 years. The other one gets 13 years. And Big K delivered the hell out of that round. He passed out paperwork to everybody in the crowd. He took Adi a page Boom, out of Lux, took a page out of Lux's book. He sure did, man. He sure did. Adi Boom was clearly affected by it. Like, you can tell it threw his energy off. And But Big K was on point, man. He was on fire. He delivered exactly what you thought he should deliver from that. You know, Big K is the guy who's been in the system also. So it makes the round hit even harder. All right. So first round, fire. Nothing you can do about that. Once that paperwork is out there and the man is delivering the, that, that material that passionately, like he always does in the first round. Um crazy crazy how do you defeat that round you don't Adi boom didn't defeat that round he came out i'll give him this credit man he did not fold under the pressure he still performed you know you can tell that it affected him a little bit but he was like man fuck it i'm here to do a job and i'm still gonna put on i'm still gonna try to deliver this as well as i can all right so that's round one we go to round two you know, Big K obviously is calling him snitch boy, goes back onto the topic, back onto the subject, and it's not as potent. The punchlines just aren't there where you thought they would be. The delivery was still strong. I'll give him that. He still kept his delivery up, but the material itself, the written material was, it was cool. It was all right, but it wasn't anything crazy. And the round was short. And I think these guys are what? The, what are they, two and a half minute rounds, three minute rounds they're getting paid for? I don't even know if he cracked two minutes or maybe he cracked right on two minutes or something like that. Second round, Adi Boom steps his game up. 
he's dropping bars he's got haymakers that are landing he's got good moments there his flow is on point he's back to being normal not that no goofy stuff in there just on point and i'm like yo i get it documentation that he told on somebody so in everyone's hardcore street thug gangster mind is like yo the battle's done already like if you rat it like whatever you can't claim to be this hardcore thug you just did this bid and you know you it's an automatic l in the streets it's an automatic l but so then what are we talking about aren't you from Brooklyn? battle rap ba- aren't, aren't you from battle Brooklyn? rap is not the streets Oh, These excuse me. Getting, Wait, hold on. Hold on. Getting, can, can can we quote that from you? Can somebody clip battle can, rap? Can somebody two guys clip, are get, two guys are clip, getting. So uh, you're, com- you're just making this just, just to make sure. You, uh, somebody's going to clip this part of the podcast and say that battle. That Vlad said battle rap is not the streets. Not you're, this form of battle rap where you're uh, getting a. It, this is pretty much. A, listen, is boxing a street fight? Is boxing a street fight? Whether it's a street fight or it's a fight in the ring, I'm not going to respect you if you're if you cheat, if you put things in your gloves, if you use it, if you're substance abusing, or you punch people in the back of the head. It all applies. Listen, man. It's just at this point, if, it's just or it's just organized. That's all it is. Listen, if we're judging it by the rhymes, if we're judging it purely by the rhymes, nah, Vlad, Vlad, you, you Vlad, you the old head man. It's hip hop, man. Don't do that. Listen. Don't do that, Vlad. Listen. Don't do it, Vlad. I, and I need you to—I need you to give Big K his credit, all right? Because th- Loaded Lux did this exact same thing, and I get it. Charlie Clips folded a little bit and made it look worse. No, he folded but, a lot. He looked crazy. But Charlie—but Charlie Clips wasn't the person on the paperwork. Big Dude, you're K, absolutely Big, right about that. Big K you're brought, absolutely right. Big K brought out the person that was on the paperwork and exposed them. I will say this much though: it would have been better if Big K saved that round for another time. But he wanted to get it out the way so that everybody can. Yeah, because he wasn't going to do anything in the second and the third round. His third round was like shorter than two minutes, also, and he didn't have nothing there. If we're going by rhymes, Adi Boom had the better rhymes, but France, I'm going to, I'm going Concede? to have to agree with you. Yes. This looks crazy. And my Brooklyn spirit will not allow me to give homie the victory. But I will say I was not impressed by Big K's second and third rounds. That's how I'm going to put it. All right. That's how I'm going to leave it there. I can't give homie the victory because this looks crazy. Not, it's not that it was just paperwork. You can legitimately punch this up on a legal New Jersey website. So, you know, can't give homie the victory, but I wasn't impressed by Big K's second and third. That's how I'm going to leave it. Um, there's something to be said about people that come home from jail and battle rap. And this is a, this is a serious thing. I'm not even trying to be funny. They have their lyrics, their lyrics in the battles at some point don't make sense. So a lot of Adi Booms, I mean, he already had weird setups and bad bars in the past, but even more now. And I think about like Surf's battle with Rum, and I get it. I'm not trying to nitpick it, but he had a lot of lines that didn't make sense neither. So I'm wondering, Vlad, is it like a little thing like you're stuck in the box for so long, you kind of lose a little bit of your brain cells in there? I mean, there's no, <laughs> right? You, I mean, you, have no, no... You, ab- you absolutely do lose some of yourself in there. Like it's not, you know, you're not going to come out the same person and you might be a little bit out of touch. But I think, you know, you pick a couple lines here and there. You can do that from any battle rapper. There are guys who have never seen a day in jail who make some the most ridiculous setups and punchlines also. Fair, so f- Fair enough. So, but you, you know, who, it is what it is. But you know who does not make ridiculous setups and punchlines? Who? My man. We got Rum Nitty versus Cherry West. These guys, these guys are pretty good at making setups. They they actually take a lot of craft and honor in their setups. Let's, let's transfer Absolutely. over back to Genesis. Um, Rum Nitty versus Jerry West. Vlad, I was um, was a little bit shocked. Talk to me. So, Jerry West is taking the leap. URL has found themselves an all star on a rookie contract. <laughs> and they're pushing this guy to the max so they can get some marquee free agents and build around this guy and some cheap veterans. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You go from Glue Easy to John John to Don and Rum Nitty, that's pretty insane. Yes. That's actually very insane. Like, you literally go from a guy that's probably 
I won't say unranked, but it's not even the top 40 battle rapper to battling two guys that are top 10 battle rappers. Mm-hmm. And, and wow. I mean, he's still competitive with John in a small room, but that's the thing. We've seen Jerry West in a lot of small environments. Now he goes against Rum Nitty, and boy, there was a gap there, Vlad. There was a clear gap. There was a clear gap. Friends, I, I got to tell the crowd. Before the battle started, yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm going to root for Jerry West. Do I want to see him win this battle? Yes, I did want to see him win this battle. Also, did I honestly think that he could win this battle? I thought he had a shot of winning the battle, so of course I'm a ride for him. Man, Rum Nitty, clear, concise, surgical, execution style up there, not wasting a single bar projection on point delivery on point crowd engagement on point i mean, he just set the tone just off the bat i can't even quote the bars because it's just so crazy and they're so intricate and there's so many of them he's one of those guys who can wrap up complex bars and make you catch it right there on the spot which is a skill that very few people have right jerry west one of the most original cats out there, too, who has crazy, unorthodox punches. France, there was just something missing there. I don't know if it was the energy, the timing, just the maybe the, the moment. It just was not up to par with what Rum was doing. And it's not like the bars were bad or the setups were bad, but it just looked the, different the stri- with Rum the- Nitty standing there. The strategy was definitely off there. Um, Jerry West did look a little uncomfortable. He did uh, feel the pressure. I mean, listen, the growing pains are going to come. There's no way you're not going to be in front of the greats and not eventually, uh, you know, learn a lesson, right? Like right. in the NBA, when these rookies are becoming all stars, or, or these sophomores, or, or you know, two, three year guys in the league that are becoming all stars, they get their lumps somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, they took their lumps to LeBron before right. they they got to the level they at now, and, and the list goes on. And, and as for Jerry West, like his strategy to try to punch with Rum, mm. I mean, at some point you got to bet on yourself, right? You got to be confident enough to say, "Yo, I can take the best puncher line for line." But you right. can't you can't base your entire performance off that. You got to go around for that and realize, listen, this is rum nitty. All I have to do is be good and be versatile, so that way I can clash, and you know, leave it to the people. That's what I and thought he was gonna do. That's what I that's thought he was gonna do too. Gonna do. And, and you know, Jerry West has this. Gr- he's in a very great position where he doesn't even have to necessarily win the battles. He just has to right. be competitive. And I, I'm not giving him leeway for saying like I, I don't want to see him win. I'm just saying, like, going from Glue Easy to John John and Rum Nitty, at this point, if you were just able to keep up with those guys, that says a lot more about you. Yeah, because he clearly smoked Glue Easy. And the John John battle, it's up for debate. I had him slightly edging the battle. I can see people having John John winning the battle. So it's yeah, like, no, hey. I, I, I had John winning, but I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, right. can see the, so, I can see the argument. But with Rum, it, it wasn't there. And, and listen. I, I, let's give Rum Nitty some credit instead of just just saying that uh, JOS took his mm-hmm. lumps. We always there's a stigma about Rum Nitty that like he doesn't win battles or like he I always brings great one. he always brings great content. But yo, Vlad, every time Rum Nitty is gatekeeping, he proves a point. <sighs> well, he proved the point last night, boy. I'm proud he of that because he's he's night. he's showcasing that like yo, I can come down and bang with you, and I'm going to make you be the best version of yourself but just know that like you can't fuck with me and you're not at my level but i will battle you <laughs> get on my level get on my level when rum nitty said i i keep you you play mortal Kombat. he said i keep the same energy the whole time like a yeah. flawless, oh, vic- flawless victory God, he said don't come crazy. in here thinking shit is nascar i can only go left oh and it was the, what's the joint he had with him and hustle <laughs> <laughs> it was so many, man. It was too many. And you know, a Rumnady performance. Like, you, if you don't beat him in person, you're not going to beat him on cam. Right. Absolutely. Well, shout out to Jerry West's third round, though. I thought he, you know he edged out that third. He but didn't fall. By that time, he, the battle was the battle was pretty much already over. But yeah, he didn't yeah. fall. He still performed, and he's going to learn from this, which is what's most important. And the next guy who he battles, he's going to step his game up and. He's going to come back for some retribution, man. So salute to Jerry West for doing your thing up there. But salute to Rum Nitty for putting on a 
fire performance last night. One of the better performances from this Genesis card. Hey, I want to I want to touch on a few things for for this performance as well. Um, I seen shouts to Misfit Murder Ave Gang, mm-hmm. our sister. Uh, she tweeted out. She was like, "Latino Heat." She tweeted out, and I want to touch on this because I also want to talk about my battle rap buddies. They said the same thing. Yeah. There was like she said, you know, you got to do more than just punch, right? And all my battle rap buddies said, all of them, Jeff, the people in the Slack, Rumnity is incredible, but it's all the same. It's all the same, you know what I'm saying? The setup, the the cadence, the punchline, and they're all good, but it, it, it gets drowned out because it's all the same. And I guess the rebuttal to that is that he lets it be known that that's what he's going to that's what he's going to do. This is what he's about. Maybe he'll switch it up from time to time, but you know what you're getting from him. And he's going to do what he does best at the highest level. Yeah. What do you think about this? What do you think about that, Vlad? Like, I, I'm okay with somebody being aware of who they are. Listen, if you if somebody has a go to move that you can't stop, why should they stop doing it? You know, I'd like to think you'd like to develop a few more moves. I personally would like to see him incorporate a little bit more stuff. But if you going away from what works for you is not going to allow you to be the best you, then I don't want you doing that. You know, I don't want you doing that. Do what you're comfortable with. And right now, what you're comfortable with, very few can match you at that level. You're going to lose to guys who are also masters at their craft and who are more well-rounded. But overall though man like he's unstoppable at what he does so i don't see him i don't see him straying away from it especially when you're taking on battles as frequently as you are now hey man um you just can't deny that jerry has got his ass kicked but in a good way and at the end of the day <laughs> there's no shame in losing the rum nitty right no not at all if you're gonna lose to somebody that's not a bad person to lose to Th- this is the best puncher of all time yes um, Vlad, let's cross back over to um, RBE, right? Mm-hmm. I want to talk about this match. And not necessarily the match, but just one po- one portion of the match. Danny Myers and A-Ward. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's my perception. They were lyrically doing really good. They had good content. The crowd, I didn't feel like was as receptive to it as it should have been. And maybe I it was a little... Un- was it. Uh-huh. I, I, I thought it was a little underwhelming to what it could have been. You know yeah. what I mean? And, but what do you think of Danny Myers bringing out his son that he hasn't met, he hasn't seen in 21 years? Yo, listen, man. Here's another situation where we got to separate real life from battle rap, right? <laughs> this is this is from Danny. Danny says, yo, listen. I had a kid when I was 18. Baby mom took the kid across country on some you're never going to see them again tip. And lo and behold... Through battle rapping. Who would have thunk it? They go, yo, I think that's my dad. They contact him. That's his son. Danny Myers meets him the night before the battle. Brings him out on the stage. Black man reuniting with his black son on the last day of Black History Month. What a beautiful story, man. This is a, <laughs> this is a Disney story. I freaking love it. Wow. Danny okay. already got 10 kids I didn't and expect now here this. comes two mo. Salute to him I love this I didn't expect this take I, 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 But, I, but I, one I, second But in the battle rap world He's gonna look crazy Like what do you do You just met this kid Oh this is crazy That's how twisted we are in this battle rap world You know You know what I thought about Like somebody you didn't meet for so long I thought of this right here Fresh Prince of- Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Fine. Uh, I'm going to call him from the road. Yeah, then why don't you do that? Yeah, I'll do that. Daddy out! What's up? Will, <laughs> damn it, man, I'm glad you're here. Um, some business came up I got to handle. So we're going to have to put a, our trip on hold. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, cool. that's cool. Just for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm, I understand. Yeah. Maybe a little longer. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Look, Vlad, oh. <laughs> Vlad, that's, 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 that's an iconic scene, Vlad. How come you don't want me, man? How come you don't want me, man? Vlad, <laughs> that is an iconic scene in all of all oh, television. In black and, and, history. 
And when I saw that, I was just like, so you went this long without seeing him, and the first thing you do is bring him to a battle. <laughs> Yo, come on, man. <laughs> Why you gotta do this and turn this positive story into something like this, yo? <laughs> yo, if he was an NBA player, would you be mad if he brought him to a game? No. This is what he does, and this is how they found him through battle rap. How crazy is that? But how do you use him? And he threw him into a bar. He threw him into a parallel universe. That's crazy. This is almost that like Jalen. It's almost like it's almost like Jalen Rose and his and his biological father. Oh man! You know, because his biological father, Jimmy Walker, played in the NBA. Yeah, and, and they never got a chance to meet, and that's that's kind of crazy too, right? But but I, I don't know, man. It's just it's such a Danny thing to do, and it. it's just like you did what? <laughs> Yo, but you know what's crazy though? When you start to think about it, you're like, you know, Danny has. He has such a love and passion for battle rap, and he'll do it every single week. And how crazy is it that through his travels and his journey, that battle rap was the thing that was able to help his kids search out for him and find him? Like, if he was just a construction worker, if he was just a plumber, they might have never found him. But they found him, and they reunited. Uh all right, Vlad, Vlad is on the Kumbaya wave, so we're not going to have fun with oh, this. Oh, man, you, you're such a toxic millennial cat, man. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> you're so toxic. Black, how, many, how many black kids don't have their black daddies in their lives? And this guy comes back into his life, and they trying to make it work, and here you go. Oh, he going to run out on his kid. He ain't ever going to see him again. Was he able to get him into Genesis? <laughs> Did he go there alone? <laughs> What's wrong with y'all cats, man? <laughs> hey, son. Uh, you know, um, I got my material off, so I'm, I'm gonna go to this other event. You know, hi, son. You know, uh, my, my homie Gucci, Gucci Gotti, he's performing. I gotta go support the West, and um, I don't have a ticket for you, so I'm gonna meet you back at the hotel. Ah, uh, see, you know better than me. <laughs> you know better than me. You sick fuck. I hate people like you. You enjoy this toxicity, but you try to claim that you don't. <laughs> listen, man. Listen, listen. Salute to Danny and salute to Manny Myers. You know what I'm saying for getting it together. And um, I hope you guys stay in each other's lives, man, and and continue to build that bond. This is a beautiful story. I hope Disney purchases the story rights to the oh, Danny Myers man. story, and Danny can become a millionaire off of this. This is this could be like that movie. You know what I'm saying? This could be like one of those movies, and he could take care of his family. And never have to worry about things again. He could have a big ranch with all 23 of his kids and enjoy the rest of his life, man, with his 43 grandkids. It would be amazing. Hey, going back to Genesis, I yes, want to talk I want to talk about um, this performance that shocked the world, Vlad. Um, and I'm very happy that this happened because 48 hours ago, this individual was getting slandered online. Mm -hmm. He's getting criticized. He's getting killed. You know what I'm saying? And this, this individual is by the name of Julian Carter, mm. a, a.k.a. JC. Mm -hmm. And he 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 beat O-Red in, in the clearest fashion. O-Red almost damn near had a meltdown on the stage, you know. Didn't oh, prepare, yeah, really. wasn't prepared at all. And mm -hmm. we'll get to O-Red in a second, but... Look, you remember as well as I did when the caffeine had his first stream and they broke the news of JC O Red Two, and the JC is unbooked from RBE or bought out or whatever. People were ravishing in anger. Oops was upset. You know, everybody was upset about this, and and for a long time, people were mad at JC. And you know, every time, anytime any bad publicity happens to JC, you know, everybody across the country, I mean, I mean across, across the pond. Across, I'm sorry, across the pond. <laughs> In the UK, they can't wait for any oh, negative. Can't they, they can't wait for any negative PR on JC. Oh, what JC unbooking matches? Hmm, sounds familiar. <laughs> 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 and you know, Ored is a transformer, and Ored's coming off the chess battle, so Ored's looking invincible. Ored actually went out his way to promo the match. He went to champion. Right. You know, he, and JC just stood quiet in between him unbooking a match and getting ready for Red. They they had about maybe three weeks to prepare or about two three weeks to prepare, and JC just 
he goes to work and O Red I don't know what happened to O Red. Yeah, I'm, this is one of the battles that I didn't get to see, but obviously I've heard from everyone that Oh, how how wait, hold on, hold on. Viewers and listeners, how convenient that when JC gets his props, Vlad didn't see it. Listen, man, the stream was acting funky, doggy. I couldn't oh, not, see it. What do you hey, want me man. to do? Also, we're going to pretend like you can't rewatch this? Oh, it's right. Caffeine's only a one-time thing, right? That's what it is, my brother. Wink, so, wink. I got to wait. You heard? I uh, haven't seen the battle. Yeah. So, yeah. it's not my fault it wasn't working. I would have loved to have watched it live <laughs> with Yo, no I- interruptions. Everybody listening, I know you guys are like, Vlad is the absolute worst. Because then every other battle worked for Vlad, huh? Listen, listen. I can't control what, what is comes the coincidence? this what's Wi-Fi, the coinc- brother. What's the I coincidence? can't control what battles what's, I'm able to see. What's the coincidence when JC has a dominant performance, his stream doesn't work? I can't explain it, brother. But, um... But by all uh by everyone's testaments, this was a bad, 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 bad look for O Red. Listen, JC only needs five to six days to complete an entire battle and memorize it. So three weeks is way more than enough time. I thought it was a little concerning when O Red said on champion, I think he was there on Wednesday, the battle was Saturday. And he said he didn't have all his rhymes ready. And I don't know O Red to be a last minute like preparation kind of guy either. Like no, it seems o- like o- it takes o- him a while to get his stuff together to to craft some of the crazy rounds that he has. Yeah, and you know he was fire versus chess, and you know me, man, I I, I picked O Red, no uh, surprise to win this battle versus JC. But I mean, it, but no, it did I mean, not it, turn it, out that t- way, brother. In your defense, the entire world was angry at JC, so I felt like people were just picking Red out of spite. And even in the face off with JC and Red, Surf jumps into the face off, and it becomes a JC versus. Uh, surf face off and everybody was just there like clowning JC the the JC hate train is going on and now he has this dominant performance where everybody shuts up Vlad I love it like a lot of people had performances this weekend where it's just like you gotta shut the fuck up man what's crazy is that JC basically threw O Red an angle for this battle you figure okay right around about that and then you can have a round about sports bars and then have a round about gun bars and there goes your battle and I don't know what happened. The brother ain't put it together. But JC was not motivated by O Red or the bag for this battle. As he told mean, Uncle Ra, he wait, was you motivated. Mean, you, mean, you mean O Red wasn't motivated? No, no. Oh, no, no. Let me let me bring this home, brother. He was motivated to smoke O Red just to get to surf. It's like oh. yo, it's not even about you right now. My motivation is to get to sue surf. So if I gotta demolish you. This is what I'm going to do. You're just someone that's standing in the way. Mm. And boy, and you know, that's that Jersey connection. And then Surf is there talking shit to him, down talking to him at the table. You know, he he was being all professional at first to try to be impartial and unbiased. And then after a while, Surf was just Surf. And then, yo, JC ain't back down either. He was clapping back at him at that table. And you gave him that extra motivation. And he went in there and smoked your man. So now, you know, Surf is agreeing that, yes, he does have to see JC. You know, he's going to do the Lux thing. Then he might take John John. And then he's going to take JC after that. So, you know, kudos to JC, man. They shook hands on it. So it seems like he locked in a battle with Surf. So mission accomplished. Hey, man. France, I got to ask you a question before we bounce. If JC would have battled both Oops and O Red last night would he still have smoked old red as bad as he did absolutely Oof, that's all i need to hear man this is a man that had nine rounds for in, in what less than 72 hours bro yeah yeah two times twice yeah. that's fucking he had an album full of raps and battled three times in, in a week twice Crazy. last year that 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 alone is just r- remarkable and I'm very upset that you did not watch the battle, Vlad. I'm going to hold you accountable. Listen, it's not that I did not watch the battle. I could not watch the battle, friends. All right? <laughs> I could not watch the battle because caffeine could not deliver a clean stream. All right? Oh, all right. Uh, okay. So I guess, I guess there's no way to watch it back on the day after, I guess. You can't. It's a live experience, friends. 
It's a one-time watch. URL told you you could only watch it one time. I guess I got to wait for the app drop. I'm sick of you. <laughs> Corona V, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I know the UK guys are sick because they're, they're quiet. They're quiet, Vlad. <laughs> They ain't and got nothing I, to say, <laughs> and I'm not. I'm not. Let, I'm not letting it go down. I'm antagonizing them on Monday. So oh prepare for, man, prepare for that. Yo, I, I picked a lot of storylines. Did you have any storylines over the weekend? Because there's still so many left. Uh let's head back over to URL. So we've gone oh, over the. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Talk well, we're still on. We're actually, we're actually still on URL. We're talking about JC. Oh and, my bad, my uh, bad. Ready. Okay, so all right, so let's but, head back but, but, to RBE. But, I got one before, before we go to RBE. Last last thing about JC this weekend, yes. The Friday night oops on the face off set. I don't fuck with JC. Oh, you man. know, I, you know, and that's it is what it is. Less right. than twenty four hours later, they chalked it up as men. What was that about? I don't know. You know, <laughs> I don't know, brother. You know. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. What, what's got, going on? Uh, I have nothing to say about that situation, man. I, I, and you I know got, what? The last day of Black History Month, two black men decide to patch it up. Uh, I'm not going to be mad at that. All right? I ain't happened- going to be mad at that. What's your What's your storyline at RBE? France. <sighs> Was Chef Trez and Sharon early contender for Battle of the Year already? Is it an early contender for Battle of the Year thus far? I know we're only two months into the year, but what do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think it's deeper than that, actually. I think they're a top six battle on RB's league all time. Mm. I Listen. think you can you can make that case. And, and I mean, Sharon was in a special kind of bag. I uh, there's a lot of people, Vlad, that like are just look. We have the up and coming guys, right? That they have to break and mold their legacy. They have to go through the growing pains. We got to be patient with them. But then we got a lot of guys: John, John, JC. You know what I'm saying? Sharon, mm-hmm. uh, T Top, which we'll get to later. These are guys that are constantly disrespected with accolades. You know, they've traveled the world. They've been on some of the biggest stages. Have a, an amazing resume. And Sharon, somebody that constantly gets disrespected too. And he brings his A game all the time, and and I felt like that finally got to him because this performance he changes style drastically, he changes cadence, and his setup for a lot of things. I'm like, whoa, where, where did this Sharon bag come from? Brought back the Sharon Philly flow. Yo, a lot of people hate on Sharon. They used to call his, you know, his, his, his is it his voice? Is it his arm waving delivery? Is it the cracking? What is it? Is it just because he's white? Is it he's unbelievable? Like, what is it? Listen, guys, you can no longer say this. This man takes every single battle serious. He has dope punches, dope setups, always has an angle, executes, rebuttals, freestyles, mid-round rebuttals, closes with rebuttals also. And he's always bringing 100%. How many times does he have to do this? Before people can give him his props. And it's not like someone is just caping for him because, oh, you know, he's the white guy who does all right against the black guys. Like, you got to give him his props. No, he's just dope. Sharon is a professional battle rapper at this point. And once again, that like, wild like say, world university. Cl- like, like you say, world class, too. World class, man. Takes on all comers. That wilding out university education that he's gotten has taken him to another level. And he showed that last night. Now, these guys were contracted for a four round battle, fourth round being a back and forth freestyle battle. But France. No, no, we, no additional pay. No additional pay, by the way. Wow. No additional pays. Man, that's crazy. I, so I hope that bag was big for them to do that. I hope you got paid, you know, a nice, handsome lump sum for that one. But France, they didn't just wait till the fourth round to deliver the freestyles. They were freestyling throughout the entire battle. Dropping and it was bombs. dope. You know what? Remember when uh, Chef Trez battled uh, Bangs and then you came back and you were like, yo, this is the greatest freestyle battle I've ever seen in my life. This is amazing. Oh, my God. Chef Trez and Bangs. Wait till you guys see this. This was so amazing. And then I saw it and I was like, all right. Like, you know, 
I guess maybe in the building, you know, it hit a little bit harder, you know. <laughs> I know how that atmosphere is, uh, wink, wink, at eye battle. You feel facts, me? So facts, facts, I thought facts. maybe my boy was just on one. But France, this one was crazy. This gave me that feeling. What you were talking about describing that battle? This is what I got watching Sharon versus Chef Trez. This was nuts. What? How about this, though, Vlad? Um, we give Sharon a lot of props. You just mentioned two of some of the best freestyle battles in the modern era. Both mm-hmm. of them with Chef Trez in it. And Chef Trez still being the independent contractor he is, battling on multiple platforms, going out to Battle Academy, doing his thing over here, over there. Hopefully, yeah. King of the hopefully King of the Dot realizes, hey, this guy's a free agent. Hello. This, Hello. Uh, Drop a bag on a brother. Hello. Uh, you know what I mean? Stop dragging your damn feet. Drop the bag on the brother so chef trez gets a name like sharon on rbe first off rbe has just blessed chef trez and i love it because they gave him ill will and sharon yeah. yes, like yes. Th- that's two powerful names to get bless, into bless, like your first bless you know and they were bombing the entire battle um chef trez deserves a lot of credit too i actually don't even have a winner to be honest i i don't even know what to pick I mean, and those are some I, of the best battles to watch. You know, if you want to watch it two, three times and get super technical and break things down, whatever, whatever. Yeah, I'm sure you could find a winner. However, the culture one, this is, you know, I'm the resident old head here. This is some vintage hip hop shit, man. Off the top ramen. You know, they went noodles off the top ramen. And, you know, this had, when I say scribble jam vibe, don't think. You know, they didn't rhyme in the scribble jam cadences, but it gave me that feeling again, man. And not too many people can do this throughout four rounds and still make it fire. So, got to give Chef Trez his props for being one of the best out here. And he's been cooking for the past year and a half, two years putting on. Got to give him his props. And Sharon, always on one, man. This was a great, 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 great battle. One of the best battles of the year so far. Salute to RBE. Matchup shit. For putting it together, man. I mean, the, the, I, I the, 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 ma- the match, the match got the the RBE chant. Yeah, oh. RBE, RBE. <laughs> hey, R-B-E. hey, but I, I, I want to, I want to put point this out. The value of Sharon is so powerful because, I mean, he he when he battled Sirius Jones, he hadn't battled in about a, in about a year, right? right? That was the end of 2017, or I should say 2017, and he took a year off after that. He comes back, battles Jims, battles mm-hmm. A Ward. Battles mm-hmm. Twerk, Battle Scotty, Battles Geechee. Now he battles Chef Trez. That's six up and coming guys that, that are like, you know, in the climate of today that he's saying, okay, I want the smoke. He ain't phoning it in at all, brother. So look how active he is after maybe, shit, I think his catalog's close to the hundreds, honestly. He has a really big catalog. So if his yeah. catalog's over 70, 80 battles, you know, he's wow. on TV and. Yep. and He's already proven in this game. Look at him still actively looking for the smoke. I hope nobody denies the fact that Sharon is is elite. Um, he's a top battle rapper, honestly. He's a top dog. Dogs. And Oops was in the building. And, you know, Sharon said he won't take Oops on KOTD. But, hey, Rodney. Oops versus Sharon. Oops says he wants that smoke. I want to see what kind of angles and what kind of... Boss Sharon comes up with for Oops, and I want to see what Oops is going to have to say to Sharon. So this would you know, be a you, battle I'd like to see in the future. You know, Oops tweeted out, mm-hmm. this is the best Sharon I've ever seen. Mm. And let, let, let's just pump the brakes on one thing, all right? Mm-hmm. Oops and Sharon, not in the same atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Not in the same stratosphere. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if they're in the same galaxy. It's a match that I would want to see an example of, but not necessarily that I, I'm, I'm requesting. What's understood ain't got to be said, brother. You uh, heard what's understood ain't got to be said. Uh, as long as you, as long as you get what I'm getting at. Um, <laughs> Facto. Yo, look at the ladies some love, right? It's still, it's still state of RV. Give it up for the ladies. Blue cocaine. Vlad. Mm-hmm. The ladies put on RB. What do you think? Yo. What do you honestly think? Because you took a little pause there, and I, and I know what that pause stands for. That was a very pregnant pause. I will say this. Shout out to them. They put on a good battle. 
this might have been the greatest leap of penmanship that I've seen from one battle rapper maybe ever. All right. Mm. You got someone who, in their last battle, was freestyling maybe 68% of the time. The writtens were a little disconnected. A lot of buildup to haymakers that didn't land. Uh, Great presence. You know, looked good up there on the stage. However, just things were just not all there put together. But you can see that there's potential there. One battle later, a couple of months later... This person has a pen that might rival some of the some of the better rappers that were up there on that stage. And I've seen people try to put it together for years and it never kind of gets to that point. So for Blue Cocaine to go from someone who was freestyling that much and didn't have it all together to having everything totally written out. And performing it flawlessly, having no gaps in the material, and to level up, and the pen was actually crazy? I haven't seen a level up like that. You know, so I want to salute her on leveling up with that pen. That was crazy. i never seen that before. And hey, man, whatever you were doing, I hope you can share that formula with other people and level it up. But the thing that I will say is that your sportsmanship was a little poor you know you turn your back to your opponent the entire battle it doesn't look good on camera you know you guys are you guys are collaborators at this point and you're selling a product and it looks bad when that happens and that led to your opponent lady J, you know talking through your rounds here and there now she's turning her back and it's it starts to look nasty you know so clean that up give us something clean to look at but salute to you because your pen went through the roof. So you are you are you calling this? I know you probably don't want to jump out the window yet, but are you calling this one of the greatest leaps you've seen lyrically? Dog, you can't you can't even reference one right now. Like I can't even think of someone who went from being a freestyler essentially with some loose writings that weren't good to having dope ass bars with setups like that with punches like that it was kind of crazy the leap was crazy honestly i believe it or not all the fe- i don't know how to say the, the, the ladies all the women battle rappers are the ones that probably make that leap more be- because they'll all come with like a certain trait in of their style that's good but then they'll be missing something always and that one thing that they're missing Somebody's gonna point it out to them, and and they're kind of like narrowed down to fix that one thing that somebody criticizes them on. You know what I mean? Like I remember RX when I first saw the first time ever against uh, Tony Blanco, mm-hmm. mad plain, you know, dry, you know, a turkey sandwich with no mayo. And over time, she said, "You know what? I'm gonna work on the pen. Step the pen up. Everybody loves the pen. They want more delivery." And against Bonnie and RX, maybe still not at its highest form. There's an effort there. Better than in the past. Blue, I feel like she has that presence. She has a lot of like of those uh, intangible factors that you can't really teach a, a, a battle rapper. So people mm-hmm. are very happy about that. But I will, be, I will be honest. I feel like her content is lacking. And somebody probably told her, like, yo, you have everything put together minus the content. And at some point in time... It, it's it's not gonna if you don't have the content you can't carry yourself out in throughout this you know what I mean, and so maybe she just put herself in the fucking dungeon and said yo, I gotta figure out how to fucking step my bars up and she did that. Kudos to her. Kudos to her. Yeah, I, I'm and as for as for Lady J, uh, I I put this tweet out like, and I and I want to touch on it just in general. I said um, up and coming battle rappers are better off relying on creating moments with their bars versus props because you don't want to be known for that because you can't, you can't, you can't, I mean, you can't replicate that. Like if you have a fire prop and you're up and coming, you're known for that one prop. What are you going to do the next performance? Bring another prop, try to outdo that and fail in the process. Bring well, bars too, all of a sudden. Because Blue, because Blue Cocaine came out with a prop first when she brought out the step stool and she used that, but she used that to build it up into a bar, you know, whereas, um, 
Lady J pulled out some blue panties from her pocket, and and that was wild. You know, I mean, yeah. listen, this ain't it, shout out to ain't the panties. F- they look kind of sexy, you know. It ain't, she, ain't the first time I seen <laughs> panties thrown in a battle. Hey, and uh, you know, she throws out some some accusations towards Blue. You know, some battle rap accusations as to her not, you know, her getting favorable opponents and looks based upon <clears throat> not just her written's, let's say. And then she dropped the panties on her head. Like, that could have went left. So I want to salute Blue for not overreacting, for taking it in stride. And then she used it in a rebuttal, which, hey, man, I appreciate it. So salute to her on that, you know. And she brought it home, and salute to her. She got a she got a 30 ball, man. Like, that was pretty crazy. But this was the greatest example of leveling up in two months of a pan that I've ever seen in battle rap. So... Salute to Blue Cocaine on that judged victory at RBE. Hey, I mean, sometimes all it takes is that one opportunity. Like, even franchise, like, from Av to Jack Boy, which was about a little less than two months, there was a leap there. Yeah, but he already had some A lot of experience. Of yeah. That was there. And a lot of experience. This is what? Her fourth battle or something like that? Third battle? What yeah, is definitely, it? Definitely less than 10, I'll tell you that. Maybe less than five, right? And franchise has been battling for a hot second, and we're still saying that he ain't pulled it all together yet. He hasn't pulled off, you know. Uh, uh, we haven't seen that upgrade in franchise from one battle to the next like that. So I gotta give her props, man. Hey, um, also moving on to um, other storylines I have here. Yo, we need to give. I mean, we already do all the time, but the world needs to give T Top his respect. Wow! We to, we, and we need oh, to have there's a, a lot to unpack in this battle too. There, 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 there's a lot to unpack in the Arsenal T Top battle. Um, first and foremost, <coughs> my girl best friend. Um, she's a Celtics fan. I'm a Lakers fan, so that's where the best French. <laughs> that's where that's where it all like stems from. Go and be- she, best friend goes. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, she'll 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 catch some battle rap on her timeline. So she's not like a big fan. She knows what she knows what's up. Mm-hmm. She sent me a text message. Let me read this to mm-hmm. you, lad. I saw a video of Arsenal whipping out the video of some dude's baby mother performing oral. This is so awful. Oh my gosh, man! <laughs> it, was, it was man. We're gonna start there. I know Arsenal's the king of disrespect, but this was this was even low for Arsenal, yo. This was this was terrible, man. Like this is not. I understand this is battle rap. Anything goes. This is the world that we live in. Once again, another theme. Real world versus battle rap. We've been going through this theme all night. Yeah, and battle rap, I guess. Hey, man, anything goes. And wow, this is cool. This is entertaining. Real world. What Arsenal did is against the law. And Shorty Wap right now could be hiring lawyers to go... Oh, you know the guy who's, like, uh, working with Wyclef right now? Yeah, the guy that's been on WeTV, the guy who's a top-viewed battle rapper in the world, the guy who's getting five figures to battle every battle. Yeah, I need to sue him because he put out an explicit video of me on caffeine.tv, and I'm there performing there was fellatio. Stri- there, was str- there was streamed for thousands of people in the world. Yes, and I'm there performing fellatio on what's supposed to be a private video clip, and I did not give consent for this, and I'm suing him. Francis, so that's reven- this happened. That's, that's, that's revenge, that's revenge porn. porn. Yeah, illegal. And on top of that, like, yo, come on, man. Like, this is a young lady who's not a battle rapper. She's not. You're not rapping against her. Like, this is tasteless, dog. And you have a daughter. Like this, I thought it was completely for, tasteless. For the people that obviously were cheering this on, I want to I want to quote this: mm-hmm. "Revenge porn is sexually explicit images or video of a, po- of a person posted on the internet, typically by a former sexual partner, without consent of the subject, in order to cause them distress or embarrassment." Mm. Now, technically, I will say this: technically, he played it off his phone. I'm not trying to defend Arsenal. I'm just... I'm, and I, oh, I ain't so no, this, check this out. I, so she can sue Caffeine for that. They're the ones who put it out there. Listen, I, and they I got that to, I, I, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not trying to defend Arsenal's actions. It was very tasteless. It's just... 
as far as a verbatim and the definition, he didn't post it anywhere. But regardless, it, the act was classless. Um, I thought it was. Yeah, hey, hold on. Can, can we can we revert back? Can we screw. Yeah, sure. Screw. Twerk, twerk, and Norbs had a altercation, and Twerk assaulted him for beliefs of Norbs hitting his baby mom or whatever he may have thought happened. Yeah, Arsenal had revenge porn of somebody's baby mother on a stage and we cheered for it the the battle rap world was upset at norbs like oh norbs deserved it but arsenal brought it into content and used it as entertainment and something to be monetized and we're cheering it on this is the these are the moments where i'm kind of like all right this culture needs to figure it out and people just want to like, be entertained and they don't like you're literally no like, I literally, literally at that moment you're throwing out your morals for entertainment because the exact yeah. same thing that you're upset about outside of the ring you cheer on in the ring right i, I don't know. listen people just want to be entertained they they just don't care so in that moment that mob mentality you know just takes over and people are just cheering and on top of that you know it, how can I say this? I guess it's easy for people to, you know, root against Norbs. He doesn't rap. He doesn't, you know, give them moments where, you know, they go back and relive this. He's not smack. So it's easy to, you know, other battle rappers will drop him in his bars. So it's easy to, to, to root against Norbs. And if something like that happens to him, then it's easy for people to cheer you know, you know, or, or say, oh, he shouldn't have done that. He was in the wrong. So, you know, cool. It's, it's cool for that to happen to him or whatever. And, you know, Arsenal does it. The mob mentality takes over. People are there. People are high. I mean, granted, the, the, the situation in, in essence, it, the situation in essence is not pound for pound the exact same situation. So I, I, I get where people are going to be like, oh, it's different. But it's just it's too much in the ballpark already where it's like, all right, are you not going to be upset about it though? Like, I don't get it. We're, yeah. Whatever. This is this isn't about the morals of it. This is more about T Top's greatness at this point. And, and here, here's something else too. You know, just like you mentioned, your homegirl hit you up about that. My homeboy who barely watches battle rap. I mean, he's from the old school like me. You know, smack DVDs, whatever. He might just catch what comes on the timeline here and there. France, you know what he texts me Saturday morning? What's up? A video clip of the twerk fight. Yo, what's going on here? Yo, this looks crazy. Is this real? Like, well, what is this? And this, unfortunately, this is the shit that gets promoted on, you know, the the, the different websites, the mainstream media websites. So the takeaway from this weekend is going to be Battle Rapper shows video clip of his opponent's baby mom sucking dick. And then the other one is going to be Battle Rapper beats up league owner WWE style. Like, that's what's going to come away from this weekend. Not that there were some great bars. Not that, you know, Drake and URL got together. It's going to be dick sucking and fist throwing. That's what's going to be <laughs> the headlines. <laughs> this is it. This is where we're at. This is where we're at with it. That's what uh, they want to cover. That's what they believe the culture is. This is what it is. Yo, caffeine's probably like, what do we sign up for? <sighs> Listen, I don't know, man, but that was class. That was classless. But the round itself, though, it got crazy. And my thing is, the round would have been crazy without the video. Like, it was fire. Like, Arsenal, like, he really brought it. Like, he was dope in that round. Yeah, I, I he mean, put, I, he put I, him in I, a I, box in that round. Hold on. We're, we're still he talking about Arsenal. Okay. Let, let's, let's, let's revert already because, like, Arsenal did all that. Right. But T-Tops has, yes. his, has his brilliance. Yes. And, and man, it was it was. It was a master act up there, Vlad, because it's like he completely anticipated Arsenal couldn't resist doing this. It's as of if he knew. Not. He, yeah, as he, as he said he, it to Uncle Rye. I, I knew he was going to do this. He's, he said, I knew he was going to do this. He got this footage. He couldn't help himself, so I prepared a round. And I, my conspiracy is T-Top said, I, if it don't, happen in the se- it don't happen in the first, it'll happen in the second. And I get to save it. Oh, or so, see, wherever it but, happened, he, he already had the round. He was going to switch things around. Now, how about this, though? Arsenal, this is where Bad Rap IQ is, is different here because mm-hmm. Arsenal thought to himself, I'm going to put the pressure on T-Top. He can't fight through this. Instead, T-Top's like, I know how to negate this. Yeah. If Arsenal realized T-Top is a very good counter writer and angler, he might anticipate me doing this. Hopefully, I win the coin toss and I put this at the bottom of the third where he can't respond to it. That's the last thing you'll remember. 
Right. He couldn't help it, dog. <laughs> he couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't, he couldn't help, help himself. It. Had to go for the low bearing fruit. He could not help himself. He had to do it out the jump, and he did it. And man, yo, T Top kicked that casket door open like the Undertaker in the second round was so masterful. Got the crowd back on his side. People were rocking with it. And I want to, I want to quote. He, he, go yeah, for it. No, no, no go for it. it. Uh, so I want to quote Loso. He put a. Uh, Top T Top showed last night that you don't just write angles. You need to play chess when you write them. Actually, mm. you anticipate your opponent's strengths and moves, and that's one of the main parts of your preparation. And him saying that is like it makes me realize how much we un- we really undervalue T Top because his style is not a punch 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 style. He's a strategist. He's an angler. He's a counter writer, and he thinks very deeply about how he's going to attack his opponent. Right. One miscalculation, he's losing a round, Vlad. Yo, T Top's one of the best, man. He's one of the best when it comes to putting this thing together. And you know, you and I, we always give him his props, man. We 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 always say he's undervalued in this thing, man. Like he's undervalued. The the the, the level of entertainment he brings, the level of writing that he brings, the moments that he brings you, you gotta give it up to this cat, man. And then he continues into the third round too, where Arsenal started to, you know, started to hit us with some of that filler. And T Top still kept going, and to me, he ran away with that third round towards the end. And T Top had an angle about Arsenal's man. You know, once again, the telling thing comes up: Arsenal's man being a an informant and all that. And he executed mm-hmm. the angle well. He had the angle about you know Arsenal having to check in when he goes to Cali every time, yeah, he, and he, the Cali he, guys don't have to check in. And it was a good, it was another good angle with some good bars mixed in. And he tried to create, he tried you know to what? create another moment, but you know. Didn't quite you know reach there, but it was a dope round. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say that. That's one thing about recreating moments. If there's anything you can take away from self check in versus self check out, yeah. is that you cannot replicate moments. Like you, no. you literally can't. Remember John, John John's body language scheme the first time against Hollow? Yeah, How it was crazy. It yeah. was. Yeah, and he's done it two times since then. And, and he did it versus been... Chess last oh, last night. He got no reaction. He ended exactly. his round after it. No. <laughs> so let this be known to battle rappers if you. I mean, they should know this already, but we're also going to tell the listeners. If you see a battle rapper create a moment, understand that it's called a moment for a reason. Right, right. Yeah, man. Yeah, but, you know, didn't re- necessarily recreate that moment, but I hey, definitely I, had T-Top winning that one. Vlad, I, I think Vlad, I think T-Top had the round of the month, personally. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to give our accolades out, but definitely T-Top, salute to you, brother. And from this point on, though... I know angles could always be reused. You know, we see Danny with the 12K all the time. So, yeah, somebody else can try to reuse this. But I think after what Arsenal did, can't hurt T-Top with that angle anymore. You can't. Yo, T-Top literally said, you can't break me. And I, and no, I, love, I, I love that. Um, closing off, Vlad, because... Well, I is, got this... something to say before we leave this subject. Okay. I, I'm going to just finish it off. Yo, listen, man. Battle Rappers... Maybe I'm just old, friends, but this videotaping your sexual exploits, sharing it with your friends and all that. So all of these guys got this video videos of said battle rappers dicks saved in their phones just to use it at random times is a little weird to me and a little crazy to me. Like, we got to grow up. This is wild. You you know whose penis this is, and it's saved in your phone. And you what, what are you, watching this? You're looking at it? Are you jacking off to this? Like, you're sharing it with your other friends? Fellas, we ain't moving like this in 2020 anymore. There's so much porn you could watch for free on the web. You don't need to be looking at your homeboy's dick and saving it in your phone. This is weird, yo. That's it. I'm moving on from that, brother. I, I'm an old head. I got to throw out the old head PSAs from time to time. Fellas, don't move like this anymore, yo. Yeah, go back to Vlad style. Share share the uh, the Polaroids. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you're busting up with your boy, you pull out the photo album with Polaroids. You got... <laughs> That, that's Vlad style there. Um, oh, my God. Clo- closing off on the weekend, I... I I was very. I love this weekend. Honestly, we did we cover everything. Yeah. By the way, 
there's still a couple matches, but the rest we'll, we'll breeze through them. Clips and Shine was was very underwhelming, and I was shocked by that because we were both thinking this was going to be a Harlem classic. Well, Shine's first was crazy. Shine's first was crazy. Clips was just I don't know, man. He was just up there. Clips but, was yeah. Clips, Clips was the Charlie Clips that everybody worries that he could be. Ugh. And that's that's pretty much how you define that battle. Rosenberg Raw and Snake Eyes, um, pretty decent battle. Um, most memorable part of the battle is the, the Rosenberg patch. Raw wore an eye wore an eye patch. <laughs> that was crazy. But I I love the fact that Snake Eyes was upset that his uh his buddies weren't there to support him for his battle. Melissa, uh, but then when Rex was it, it wasn't bad. <laughs> you know, like he understood it, so that was kind of crazy to me. You know, he was upset that he he, he had. Friends, decent debut uh, though on RBE. Decent debut. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I thought Snake Eyes won the battle too, personally. Um, oh, okay. What other we'll battles are we gonna? That. What other battles? Oh, you got Rosenberg on that. I'll uh, show you. Is oh, there anything else I'm leaving, leaving out? The table? I think we got it all, man. I think we got it all. I think we got all that mattered. France, man. I, I, before we sign off, I got a couple of questions out there. You know that. Uh, oh, we got a mailbag. Yeah, you yeah. Sweet. We got a little mailbag here, France. All right, man. Battle Rap is Life. Shout out to you, my man. Mixtape Roundtable. This question is, just as I tweeted France, I think it's time to have a healthy conversation about Twerk's career and how he has created a ceiling for his legacy. I think when one really looks at his career at this point, one can argue he's one of Battle Rap's greatest disappointments. Agree? Disagree? Care to share? I, I agree. I said Twerk has put that. But Twerk, Twerk is he said it himself. I have no one to blame but myself for the fact that everybody sees my name on a flyer and they'll say if, and that's that's who he is. If and mm. and living off potential is is a rough thing because I guess in battle rap, like your last performance is what people always remember you by. Yeah. So it's very easy to have a, a volatile career where you're good you don't the next battle and you don't reach that level you, plat, you plateau then you you rally again so i see that but twerk has a lot of data in his in his favor of underwhelming moments or not you know not rising to the occasion or crumbling under pressure or, or choking or or you know and he has a lot but he's also a walking highlight reel and it's got to the point where it's almost you could say, damn, he's almost better in a small room than he is in a big stage. And, but he has so many good big stage performances, too. And like I said earlier on, we talked about Twerk and Geechee. At some point, you are who you are. And right. it, this isn't going to, this isn't going to, at the very least, leave people's minds until he gives like a solid year or two of just consistency. Like, and one thing we didn't, we didn't talk about in the, in the Twerk and Geechee battle, they were too, they were too friendly. And Turk's always mentioned how he doesn't really like to battle his friends like that. Him and Tork, him and Geechee did a watch together. That would have never happened in the Surfer Hitman era. Right, right. Yeah, but I just thought maybe the magnitude of the match and them knowing what was on the line, I just thought maybe they would have been able to put that to the side. I mean, Surf and Hitman, though, they were friends when they did that battle. They were riding around in the same car out of town. And they were kicking it and hanging with one another, but they still managed to put on a classic for us. So these guys should have been able to do that, should have been able to put that to the side and, and put on a classic for us. France, what else? What else Selvin Q, at Cell underscore choir. Who were the winners beyond the actual battles between both events? Also, do we have a clear king of RBE after the get back? So wait, I didn't understand. Like, who are the winners beyond it? Like, who, like which league overall won? Yes, between both events. Yes. Oh, RBE won. RBE right. won. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- th- that that's settled already. Like, caffeine in the building. See, when when you open these doors to free, I, mm-hmm. I sounded like you open the cr- the crowd to a lot of people that aren't used to coming to bad rap events because in the stream you can hear it. And people talk about it in the venue there was nonstop chatter. Um, Five out of those six battles were damn near thirties. Mm-hmm. Four, four or five of those battles out of the six battle call was thirties. You still had an eight hour day for six battles, um, while RBE had a seven hour day for ten battles, and they put on a, a battle of the year contender. They had one of the best industry returns ever. Um, yeah, RBE, you could go down the list. They they had the better event. Does that mean RBE is instantly the better league? No, but you know that that. That always lets you know that you can compete, and they welcome the smoke, and they're Absolutely. okay with it. 
Yeah. Um, Clearly, RBE won. Also, do we have a clear king of RBE after the get back? And shout out to Show Off for making his return versus Mac Myron and Mac Myron making his return back to RBE also. Yeah. Um, shout out to Show and Mac. They put on a pretty good battle for two and a half weeks prep. Yeah. Props to those guys. I always thought it was the king of RBE, personally. Like, he just gets, he's gotten the biggest plates there, really. Yeah. When, when I mean, like, you think of the original roster. None of them have really gotten the plates that Ill Will's gotten. I don't think these guys have headlined the way Ill Will has. And Oops is one of the guys with a million view battle on RBE. But, I mean, that that battle in itself is more like just an anomaly and an outlier because it's not necessarily a battle. It's like a, it's a beautiful collaboration. It's poetry up there. I mean, not taking away from it, but I'm just saying, so if we're talking battles, like King right. of Battle Rap for a league, you know... Yeah, man, I got to agree with you on that one, man. Ill Will is rocking that crown right about now. Two more questions, then we're up out of here, friends. Yo, for those that really want to rewrite, rewrite, <laughs> for those that really want to rewrite yesterday and say that Twerk didn't lose, has Twerk hit that level that Charlie Clips, Tay Rock, and others at one point where proof does not matter anymore for him? No, absolutely not. He He's nowhere near as accomplished as those guys because... He hasn't been able to to bring that level of uh, elite performance or these highlights being a headline on URL. He's held a headline twice on the league, Mr. Wavy and Gichi And both of mm-hmm. those performances are not some of his best work. And I would really hope for the Twerk fans, the hardcore purists, so at the very least admit, all right, yeah, I, there's a lot of other Twerk performances I like over these two, which I, I think they will, personally. You never know. But... No, he's nowhere near as accomplished as a, as a Charlie Clips. Charlie Clips headline gnome in Summer Madness two years. You, yes, can, sir. Vlad, that that might never happen again. It's, and, right. I, and I don't think it, I don't think it's happened in the history where somebody's even headlined both of those events in the same year, let alone do it twice. That shows your dominance. That's a strong. That's a strong. That's a dynasty like <laughs> accolade. <laughs> so he's not at that point of the Charlie O for the Charlie Clips three O era. <laughs> Remember that era. We're, st- we're still be- trying to f- no, absolutely not. We're still trying to figure out if he could be consistent. But mm. one thing, twer- one thing, Twerk has built is that that purest fan base where they will ride and defend him. He right. has that. That's that's one part of it for sure. Once you build that, you know you can fall back on a lot of things. But as far as actually being in that level of greatness, uh, there's a lot. There's a, the road. There's still a long road to go. Facts. Last question: What is the future for caffeine? Will they really make things better for the next event? I think it's too soon to talk about the future for Caffeine because they are on a three-event contract. Mm -hmm. We need to see how they bounce back from this event first before we really talk about their future. You know, you don't talk about somebody's future uh, so so much two years ahead before free agency, right? Like, yeah, Giannis is a free agent 2021, but we're not talking about his free agency yet. You know, we're talking about seeing what he can do before he leaves, if he leaves. Right. Um, so we have to wait to see what Caffeine does in the very next event, which will be at the end of March, Low Deluxe versus Sue Surf. Shout out to Smack for breaking that. Um, Hope, hopefully we get all the battles to make up for this event. I'm hoping. And re- re- seeing how they respond to the criticism, the adjustments, and the flaws – then we could talk about what's the future of caffeine. If they do way better the second time around, now we're excited for them. If they do this again, then we're dreading a third opportunity for them. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like the Cassidy. <laughs> shout out to Cassidy. We mentioned him to close out the pod. It's almost like his performances, right? Like the Goods battle, he had that one round and whatever. Mm-hmm. People were willing to give another shot. The Arsenal performance was terrible. And, I mean, at this point, if we see Cassidy on the car, just because he promos, we'll be happy. But people won't be excited to hear Cassidy's battling again. But if Cassidy did really good against Arsenal, it'd be a different story. Yeah, So, we need, we need to see how Caffeine responds. Yeah, man, I'm hoping that they get it together. Get it together and, you know, give us what we've been looking for. And, listen, I'm one that always sees the glass half full. So, I'm totally rooting for everything to go right. I'm rooting for more money to come into the league, and I'm hoping for the league to keep their autonomy and do things the way they always done. More money for the battlers. Everyone gets to feed their families. So I'm hoping that things go right. 
you know, I'm hoping they go right. And I'm going to put it out there in the atmosphere. They're going to get it together for the next event and they will rock out. So I'm hoping that that's what happens. And I can't wait to see it, you know, because it's only going to go one way or the other. But with all that being said, we want to thank you guys for going on this two hour journey with us this ride with us covering this weekend of battle rap i am so tired it is already monday now friends <laughs> where it's a monday our third day of covering this stuff follow the march, show we're on march 1st right it was march 2nd now brother oh okay march 2nd now so you guys in the uk all the bros out there man can't wait to get a recap of things because you couldn't see a coffee no work you're gonna be able to check it out our recap uh, follow the show on Instagram and Twitter at LTBR Podcast. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Program V. Log on to Let's Talk Battle Rap dot com. You want to leave us an email? Email us at Let's Talk Battle Rap at Gmail dot com. Wherever you're listening to this on, yo, it's very important that you hit that subscribe button. If you're on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, leave us a comment, leave us a question over there. It helps people see where we're at, and you know what I'm saying? Helps your boys out. Spotify, subscribe, leave comments, all that. And until next time, peace. <laughs>